These are carbon fiber, custom made, bespoke cycling shoes for pro cyclists, and they weigh almost nothing and cost 3,000 pounds. So I've come to London to meet the man that makes these and find out what makes them special and how they make cyclists faster. Regardless of what sport you do, footwear is hugely important. And in running, we've seen marathon records tumble and amateur times get faster, thanks to a significant part to Nike's Vaporfly shoes. But what about in cycling? Well, shoes like this have been used by athletes to win Olympic gold medals and other events too. So this particular shoe uh, is one that's been used by Stefan Bissiger of EF Pro Cycling, where he's become a uh, European time trial champion and has you know, won several other races as well. And in cycling, the winning margins are often tiny. So how much difference does a shoe like this make over a conventional shoe that you can just buy in the shops? First up, they're incredibly light. Cycling is a power to weight sport and one of these shoes weighs 178 grams. Really, really light. If you compare that to you know, a good quality road shoe off the shelf, you're looking at more like 300 plus grams once you've got an insole fitted. Although they are very minimalistic, you wouldn't want to walk to the shops in them because there's not really any sort of sole or heel protection uh, on the base of the shoe you can see there. And the retention system is also very simplistic. It's just this pin closure. Um, although I am told that there is a boa dial in development. Because they're designed to be completely custom for the individual that they've been fitted for, the overall size of the shoe can be much less, which means it has less frontal area. When you combine that with the fact that it's just got a very smooth outer surface, it makes it considerably more and measurably more aerodynamic than just the standard off the peg shoe. On the bottom of the shoe, you can see the 3D printed titanium cleat fittings. Proper cool. And another benefit to the shoes is a lower stack height compared to a normal shoe. This is the gap between the pedal axle and your foot. And this allows the saddle and rider to be lower too, making the rider more aerodynamic. A marginal gain, but one that's important to pros. And the next big thing is stiffness, because what you've effectively got here is a carbon exoskeleton that is designed to completely encapsulate your foot. And the stiffer you can make the platform through which you're pedaling, you can make it more efficient and have more efficient power transfer. This is something that I've actually heard about in the past from talking to Phil Burt, who used to work with British Cycling as a physiotherapist. And he told me that they actually saw big gains for certain riders when using uh, custom shoes such as this, especially on the track. And we were talking, you know, hundreds of watts in, in peak power uh, difference for some sprinters, such was the improvement in that power transfer and their biomechanical efficiency. Biomechanics isn't something I know much about, so to find out more, we're gonna to speak to the creator of these shoes, Mick Hapgood. Mick is a biomechanical podiatrist who has worked across a variety of sports and currently works for professional UCI team EF Pro Cycling. He's currently working with Team GB's track and road squads of both able-bodied and Paralympics, as well as USA Cycling's men's and women's track teams. Over the years, Mick has worked with athletes from British Sprint Kayaking, long track Japanese Olympic cycling team, as well as an increasingly long list of individual cyclists right across Grand Tours. Good to see you, Mick. Thanks for um, you know taking the time to, to show us about the shoes and, and explain explain them. But what is it that makes them so expensive? Well, I mean, this is a a fully customised um, shoe based on the individual's uh, biomechanics. Um, it is basically made from the ground up. It has got all the components that basically make it fast, light, aerodynamic, but what makes it super special is that it's molded around, specifically molded around that individual's best position. So by doing that, we're not just creating something that's beautiful, but incredibly functional and powerful. Every single shoe actually has the orthotic built into the system. So for those of, for the, not everyone's familiar with what an orthotic is, but it's yep. what some people might refer to incorrectly as an insole. Am I right? Well, 
This is a different setup and orthotic is something that's prescribed specifically for that individual. Now, that can be quite subjective, but in this case, this is a customized cycling orthotic, very specifically designed for cycling only. Okay? Right. And by doing that, what we're actually trying to do is to lock the foot in its best position. And in this case, these orthotics are rigid, super, super rigid. And the benefit of that rigidity is purely the fact that by locking the foot, we need to basically have something that really stabilizes and does lock that foot. We need something to actually tell the foot, this is where you're gonna be and stay there. So this is the most important part of this. So yes, it's all wrapped and beautiful and aero and lightweight and using F1 grade materials, but this is the most important part. One of the things that I've heard from speaking to like Phil Burt from, from British Cycling in the past is that he alluded to the fact that British Cycling had worked out that there was actually a significant biomechanical gain for some people in having the right sort of shoe fit and a custom shoe in the right sport and stuff. Yep. So how does that work for, for different people and you know what is that sort of biomechanical gain that you can get? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's important to know that, you know, orthotics and position and things like that, they're not just for Olympians. I mean, Olympians get the same benefit. In fact, this is the same orthotic that goes to an Olympian shoe, outside of a custom shoe, of course. I'm glad you said that, because I'm not an Olympian. But it, it doesn't matter what your profile and what your typical, like what profile of a cyclist you are. Yeah. It's all about creating a stable base. And our bikes are built with stiff frames, stiff wheels, stiff shoes. The stiffer that is, the more power transfer. So if your foot is naturally flexible, think about what happens within the fixed structure. Your foot rotates. Everything's triplanar, everything moves in different levels and different, in different planes. If your foot is moving within the shoe, arguably you're not, well, the more we can kind of maintain position around the sagittal plane, the more we create power. The more additional movement around the two other planes. Wasting energy. Wasting energy. Oh, so I, it's I, all I, about I, trying- That must be why, that must be why where I've been going wrong all these years. So we're gonna see two different aspects here is that some people get power gains and with you, with a floppier foot, we're gonna see more of connectivity. And that's probably the biggest response we would see. People talk about feeling more connected and more, more able to gain the foot when they want to, gain power in the foot when they want to, and that's probably the biggest thing. So for you, I expect kind of like feeling like you're, you're there where you wanna be, and then from that, less fatigue. Okay. So to better understand the benefits of having a properly supported foot and the process of how the shoes are made, Mick previously visited GCN Megabase to take a mold of my feet. This molding process is very similar for both the custom shoes and orthotic insoles. He's using these special plaster socks and key to this process is using his podiatrist expertise to get my floppy feet and arches into the position that they should be in rather than the collapsed position they tend to adopt. If, if, we, um, if me and Alex want to put, put a pair of these shoes on our Christmas list, yeah. Oh, yeah. how long do they take to make and what's the damage? Well, how long they take to make depends on how many machines I have going. So basically, uh, there's about 85 hours per shoe. Wow, okay. that's a lot. Now, the more machines you have, obviously, that changes because you can do multiple, multiple things at once. So, uh, but yeah, the process is it's probably about a month. Um, Damage-wise, they're about 3,000 euros. Oh. Yeah. Uh, there's that thing. So you know, like Adam Hansen's shoes, yeah. and there's this thing for things to be UCI legal, they have to be commercially available. Yeah. And so there's this, you know, Adam Hansen's shoes were always mysteriously out of stock <laughs> yeah. on his website. Like, yeah. um, so, you know, but is this, can people actually like, l like legit buy this or is it just for like, sort of one-off pro? No, 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 not at all. I mean, this is, you know, this is, this was born out of the pandemic, but the pandemic closed a lot of doors and then opened, you know, others. So, yeah. you know, having that kind of time to, to, to figure this process out and this has become, you know, the future and, and I love it because it's doing something I've always, envisaged and you know being able to put all those years of, of working in cycling but offering something completely different that literally you know there's a maybe two other competitors but i really think this sets itself above the rest and that's the whole goal is because i'm, I'm doing something which i genuinely believe in yeah. um but no i've already got the next six the next six shoes working at the moment and then can you say anyone that you're making shoes yeah, for? Yeah, come on, spill the beans. Oh, I don't know if I can just yet. <laughs> oh, it's going to be... Uh, well, it's that means they must be famous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, I've got changed. You may notice I'm not wearing my uh, usual Castelli uh, bib shorts. That's because I'm currently like the kid at school that forgot to bring their gym kit and had to raid 
lost property. Um, fortunately, CycleFit had some spare bibs <laughs> that I could borrow. Anyway, Mick's gonna take a look at my feet now. All right, so look, now that we've taken the, um, the plaster cast of the foot, this is the end result, which is a carbon fiber based orthotic. So now time to uh, put, the, uh, put the orthotics to the test. <laughs> Great, let's do it, jump off. Ooh. Having made the custom orthotics, Mick then checks they fit properly and tests them out on the static bike to check that they're positioning my feet correctly and are comfortable. The idea behind the orthotic is that it gives the biomechanical benefit of the custom shoe, but in a lower cost and more practical form that you can use day in, day out. As Mick says, custom shoes are so minimal, riders tend to only use them for track and time trials. Many pros use orthotics, but you never see them because they're hidden inside their shoes. It's quite unusual having these, and I've never, you know, really done anything like this, but I can feel, it feels like there's something in my shoe pushing up my, my arch and sort of holding my foot into a sort of different position to where it normally goes. It is, yeah, you can feel that it's in there. Well, I've got my, oh, my custom orthotics now that have been fitted to my shoes. Thanks, Mick, for Absolutely. doing that. It's proper cool. Hopefully now I'm going to be more uh, biomechanically efficient. Absolutely. So, yeah. So keep in mind, you've got to basically adapt to these. You can't just knock these out and do 120 on day one. Right. Okay, so really important to listen to your body because pain is very different to adaptation. So just see how it goes, adapt to it over time. It's super important. And when you're ready, more time, more distance, and more power. Right. Cheers. So there you have it, the Formula One of cycling footwear. I think this is really super interesting. And in one instance, I've heard that a particular uh, Olympic sprinter saw a 250 watt improvement in his peak power through using a pair of custom shoes similar to this. Such was the improvement in biomechanical efficiency. But that's not the case for everyone. Some people don't need to have their foot position sort of corrected with an issue. Everyone's feet are kind of different. But as someone who does have arches that clearly kind of collapse inwards, having something that can hold my foot in a more optimum position to improve that biomechanical efficiency, I'm intrigued to see what the difference is. I also have an issue where my right knee does tend to sometimes get a bit wonky and step out when I'm pedaling. And instantly when using these, I could see that it was correcting the alignment of my knee and the foot and how it was going. So I'm going to update you in an upcoming tech show in a few weeks time to see how I'm getting on longer term using uh, some special insoles and see if it has improved my pedaling and my knee tracking and see if I'm actually feeling more powerful uh, on the bike. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. But the biggest takeaway that I got from, from Mick was that the most important thing is getting that foot in the right position. And for that, you don't need to have the three grand mega fancy shoe, although I would quite like some of them, they are super cool. The most important way to do that is with a special insole or orthotic to correct the position of your foot. Now, I hope you found this video interesting. If you have, then make sure you subscribe for more nerdy tech like this and to keep updated when I update on the shoes. And I'll see you in the next one.